Welcome to the Profit Talks podcast, hosted by the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. This show is the go-to resource for business owners seeking empowerment, education, and resources to succeed. Join us as we connect you with experts, share the triumphs of fellow entrepreneurs, and reveal the wealth of assistance available to you today to level up your business. So let's go. Let's dive in and learn more. Okay, today we're going to talk about probably one of the most important topics there is, and it's the one topic we never talk about. It's finances. It's money. It's access to capital. And what do you need? And how do you get it? And when do you get it? And all that with a guy who does this full time, all the time uh, for his clients and for the SBDC clients. Welcome, if you will. Kind of a legend in the organization here. <laughs> Craig Russum. Really? You really are Thank here. You, Paul. You're the guy when yes. when when meeting because full disclosure, I'm one of the SBD consultants. <laughs> and when we're all talking to that client and they're trying to raise get a loan, they're trying to get a grant, they're trying to get some kind of financing in place. And we all say, I don't know, this is a mess. How are we gonna get this? How are we gonna figure this out? You're the go-to guy. You're the guy that everybody calls, right? <laughs> yeah, most of the time, it seems like I'm brought into those those <laughs> files. That's how, how I'm being utilized, certainly. I'm here to do that kind of work, to dive a little deeper. Um, <laughs> and try and get some of the answers to, to, to the tough questions as we dive into into finances. Yeah, well, let's dive into finances today here because I say, I've said this for a long time, that finances are like the black box in the airplane. <laughs> it's where the secret data is. It really yep. shows you the flight path and what went wrong, but I can't find the black box. I don't know how to crack it open. <laughs> it's a code. It's a code. <laughs> I don't even know what it says sure. when I look inside of this black box there. Let's dive into this a little bit. Why are finances such a murky world for most of us? Well, hopefully it makes you feel better. I mean, you're not alone there. It, it, it's, uh, <laughs> I do. It, I'll be the first to admit it right? Yeah. It, it's an astonishing number, I think. Um, I equate it up to over 80%, I'd say, of business owners, small business owners, that um, struggle with that same concept, um, ultimately, maybe even higher than that. And I'd say COVID did a lot of things, um, bad things to small business and, and <laughs> <Yeah>. individuals, right? <laughs> right. Um, and, and what it did to small business is it truly exposed, I think, that deficiency in finance, um, lack of capital, understanding capital, the numbers. Because ultimately, business owners, you know, some of them weren't able to access the federal cap, uh, you know, programs that were available to right. them. They didn't have their taxes cash, done, didn't, didn't, didn't have, have uh, uh, information that they needed. All the information, yeah. their books weren't reconciled, they didn't know, right? So um, you're not alone there, and that's what we've spent in, in the SBDC and what I do daily uh, is to try and help folks better understand their finances because you're right, there's information in there that will drive your business to the stratosphere uh, if you can unlock it and understand it. Well, let's talk about uh, for a couple of minutes how you came to understand it here. You started life back where I grew up in the Midwest here, right. at Miami of Ohio. Many of my friends, I'm from the state, great state of Michigan here. Sorry, we won't argue about <laughs> Ohio State, Michigan. But I had many friends that went there, great mm -hmm. school. And you came out as a, what, aeronautical engineer or something? Uh, like yeah, just about. It was one of those times in my life, I was actually, I was flying airplanes uh, out of Kent State, of all places. Uh, they had a flight school up there and um, decided to go more technical route and, and transfer down to Miami of Ohio, where I could still fly airplanes, but um, study aerodynamics and, and mathematics. So, yeah. my, so numbers driven, I guess, from the beginning, which has served me well in the finance sector, uh, not realizing it at the time, but it, it was a, a horrible time to be in the aer aerospace uh, industry back in the early kind of to mid uh, 90s, right? No jobs, no internships. So. Ultimately, the Cold War was over. Cold, I, I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Defense spending was zero. Like it was. It was awful. It was an awful time to be in the aeronautical space. You actually told me offline that as part of your uh, program, half the people in the program were talking about what else they could do right. half the time. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was jet propulsion class. We'd talk about uh, what else we, you know we were going to do with ourselves. So for me, uh, ultimately, I packed up the van and moved to uh, Vail, Colorado. Decided of to, of course, right? Why? Why not? Uh, moved to the mountains and. Um, Fell in love, 
uh, with the mountains and the outdoor life that uh, that's there and was very fortunate to you know partner with two others and we bought a sporting goods store a sporting goods store the yeah. last thing in the world your poor thing. parents thought yeah, you were going to do uh, most definitely <laughs> yes they 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 never really expressed directly i suppose their disappointment at the time but they did support me a thousand percent i mean and i tell this story to my clients many times that are looking for capital Listen, I started with $10,000, right? It was a gift from friends and family. Yeah, and right. many small business owners start that same way. I had two amazing partners, uh, the three of us, right? We pooled our money together, bought the shop, grew it to three locations, and Good really for you. Yeah. just lived the life of being an entrepreneur, being part of that community, and being a s- small business owner. And then somewhere along the way, you decided, let's get real, and you got a real job working at a bank or something. Real job. Uh, well, right. I, I met a Southern California girl. I guess that's what did it. Uh, uh, that's right. the, that's the beach. The, that was the downfall, right? Yes. It was uh, <laughs> to transition from mountain life to, to the beach life. And so I moved out here, gosh, I think in 02, 04, somewhere in there, um, got married, um, got involved, uh, yeah, right, with uh, Series 766 with UBS Financial, got my mo- uh, broker's license since 06. So just dove deep into the finance sector and just been doing that really ever since, trying to help small business owners in a variety of different ways. And then came on to the SBDC back in, um, I think it's like October 2018. So pre-COVID, so a lot of new consultants talk to me about that. They want to understand yeah, what the SBDC right. was like pre-COVID, COVID and now, you know, post COVID, where are we and stuff with it? So, because the SBDC saw a boom uh, oh, goodness, during yes. COVID because you were the guys, we were the guys that mm-hmm. could help direct you to grants mm-hmm. and loans. And everything. suddenly we need money. Right. My business got shut down. I can't open for a while. The landlord wants the rent still. Right. Uh, do I lay everybody mm-hmm. off and how do I get the team back? And mm-hmm. what do I do with the inventory in the back? And I don't know. All these questions. It, it, I needed a financial plan to make it through. Goodness. And my financial plan was <laughs> week to week, month to month. Right. So finally, people started to listen to us, right, where it yeah. came down to the finance side and planning and how important it was and access to that uh, the capital. So goodness, yeah, we did, I think, over 500 webinars on idle, you know, economic injury, disaster loan, PPP and strategy. So yeah. many strategy talks. Honestly, it put the SBDC on the map. I think uh, it did for, yeah. for us. You know, it, it it helped show everybody, you know, what resources were available to them, and uh, we were there to do our best, you know, one on one if we had to to try and help folks through that time. Because where else do you get free financial advice? Your bank is going to groan. Maybe they'll right. give you a couple of things. Go find somebody, but everybody else wants to get paid to do this right. stuff here. And believe me, it's the last thing you want to pay somebody to do. I want to pay to expand my business. I want to pay to hire more people, maybe. I want to pay to promote my business. I don't want to pay people to analyze my business. Right, I know it. And it is an area that uh, so fortunate to be with the SBDC to help people in this way because they, they do that look on their face. Um, they're, they're so appreciative to have somebody just kind of talk through it with them. Yeah. And right, there's no catch, no charge, right? And we're there to, to help them better understand it. And it pains me a bit that they don't have that relationship uh, with their CPA or their accountant. Right. And we have that discussion as well. Um, why isn't it working? You know, why, I just didn't realize I was supposed to have that relationship with them, right? That's a no. lot of the answers I get. I just send them the stuff they do, the taxes. <laughs> right? you know, maybe they pay some of the bills, but I have QuickBooks. That's my relationship. Uh, I know. it. Goodness. So, yeah, that we could spend a lot of time just talking about QuickBooks. It's I'm 25 plus years back when you know it was on a little three and a half inch floppy. So a <laughs> yeah. lo- long time ago, 25 years in QuickBooks. You know, it's one of those necessary evils in small business. It, it does work, uh, but you got to use it properly. And it doesn't tell you anything no. on its own. It doesn't wake you up and say, you can program it to do right. various things. But most of us just pay our bills and track. And so I get a profit and loss thing. And maybe that's, and really what I'm doing, I'm tracking my expenses. And I send that <laughs> to the accountant and they do the right. uh, taxes. Eight months ago, right? Eight, you're eight months behind. and right. So yeah. how, do we, how do we move your business forward when we don't have accurate, up-to-date financials? And so that's usually first step for me, um, working with a, a new client. We, we got to get into it and we got to better understand it. And it's an area that first, um, I say you may need to spend some money. 
You may need oh. to spend a little bit of money there, yeah. folks, in your QuickBooks. Have the right people there to help and support you to better understand it. You are a professional at something else, right? Something brought you to be a small business owner. Right. Passion that you had. Passion. It's usually passion. Uh, when I opened this business uh, 12 years ago, I didn't have a plan. Right. I just had a little bit of money, and I thought, I'll try it for six months and sign a six-month lease and see how long it lasts. That was 12 years 12 ago. Years. I, I bet you weren't passionate about QuickBooks. No. No, oh, see? Oh, God, no. <laughs> so, so why are you there, right? Stuff. Why you spend? Why are you wasting that creative talent and, and your passion on trying to learn something that... Um, yes, I want you to understand your numbers. I want you to understand the program a little bit, but I don't need you spending your time there um, when we're trying to build and grow your business. Yeah, so. right. All right, so uh, let's let's go deeper. We're, we're just when we thought it can't get any worse. <laughs> uh, they did a few other things to us, like they extended the tax deadline. Uh, How yes. many of us are still a right. year or two behind because it was we put it off to october and then october came around and i right. forgot all about it right yeah. yeah so much for like one or two month extension how about we just kick it all the way to october yeah you know and, and then i have people that are looking for access to capital and you know we get to do that first before anything and so we have to get that done and it it, it, it pains me to hear you know that we haven't closed out 2022 that we haven't even analyzed it yet or even looked at it. And now we're already coming into 2024, honestly, folks. that That's two years behind on our financials and our books. So how do we plan? How do we how do we even know that access to capital is the right thing right. When, when we just don't know yet? So. Somebody asked me years ago, it, it's stuck in my head. I have a small business. I created this online radio station. It's like live podcasting here. Uh, we're at the University of California, Irvine Supplied Innovation Center. It's a big deal, and we do some big clients. And I still struggle with that idea. Do I need more money? And what would <laughs> right? I do with it? Well, somebody asked me years ago, they said, if somebody came, a guy came in and did an interview with us, a big financial guru. He was fascinated, but I was doing, you know, podcasting, sure. just expanding and stuff. And he said, what if somebody gave you a million dollars? He said, I'm not saying I'm gonna give you a million dollars, but what if somebody wanted to invest in this business? They, they thought this is something could get even bigger here. Mm -hmm. What would you do with the money? Right. And I thought to myself, I don't know. I don't have a plan for that. I'm just getting through this month and right. th this is a, it's a business I love, it's a business I built, I'm, I'm, I'm growing it incrementally, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I never sat back and looked at what could access to capital do for me? Would I open up more locations? Would I open up a bigger location? Right. I, what could I do? What would I do? And because of that, I still am stuck in that quandary. I bet there's lots of small businesses out there that every so often think, I could become bigger. I could take this to the next level. Right. And so you somehow think, well, I'll just go get some money. What would you do with the money? Do you really know what to do with the money? No, most folks don't, and uh, we just so happen to build a program around that called mm. Level Up ah. right here at the SBDC. So we, yes, we recognize that. How, how, how many times have you heard that story where, you know, an entrepreneur, they, they grow, uh, they double their top line revenue, and the next thing you know, they're gone bankrupt. Yeah. It's like, right. well, wait a minute. What ha isn't that the dream? Isn't that to double our revenue? Right. Um, Sorry to break it to you, right? It, it's without the proper planning and understanding what that growth really means, uh, it can bankrupt you. Yeah. So you need to have the plan around it. Because you can overreach. I'm gonna mm -hmm. open up a second location. Yeah. I'm gonna take in partners. I'm gonna borrow a bunch of money to buy more inventory. Whatever you think it is, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden that's a leap too far. Too far, right? And next thing you know, you've worked you know three times as hard and you're losing money, you know, yeah. where before you were profitable, one man show, you know, doing your thing. So it is the, having the proper planning in place. And it starts with your financials. It starts with, you have the history of your business. So we need to take a look at, you know, the cyclical nature of your business, where the money's coming from, the revenue, analyze your expenses. So we have a clear picture of your business. And then from there, we can build that out. Today, really, I want to challenge folks to, to do that. Write a few things down for 2024. You know, it seems, um, right, we all talk New Year's resolutions uh, yeah, personally, right. but we need to do that for our business as well. Give me a specific thing. Is it, I'm, is it, a, is it an aspiration? I want to grow. I want to go. I want to, I'm going to hit some targets. Or is it, I want to be more efficient. 
I want. I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know what my financial goals are other than I want to make more money. <laughs> make yeah. more money. All right, but at what cost? You know, do you want to, you willing to work twice as hard? You mm. know, for a little more money. Like so, we need to quantify some of that. Sometimes it is just about being more efficient, doing exactly what you're doing now, cutting some of the expenses, or being more efficient. And mm-hmm. and we've increased profits significantly just by tweaking a little something. Um, we wouldn't know that unless we understood our expenses properly, you know, and really analyze where we're spending our money, uh, where we're resourcing our goods, our inventory. Can we get terms from our vendors, right? There's all these little tricks to, yes. to eke out one, two or 3% and it can add up. And I'll give you another example. Yep. So prior to this, in between my years as a in youth, uh, uh, working in radio and then re-entering the field 10, 12 years ago in this crazy world of online radio, podcasting, whatever you want to call it. I had a number of crazy businesses, and one of them was an Irish pub. I'm Irish. It'd be, wouldn't it be fun? <laughs> why and not? For, why not? <laughs> and it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Oh, my goodness here. Are the things It's like throwing a party every night, and people trash your place every single day. I'll give you just a silly thing here. So somebody said, what's your pouring cost? And I didn't know what my pouring, what's it cost to pour that liquor? I don't know, we buy it, we <laughs> sell it, and hopefully there's a profit in it. Right. And we realized that our pouring cost, it's supposed to be like 10 or 12, I forgot what it is, 10 or 15%. We were like at 30% or 35%. We're just mm-hmm. heavy Giving pouring, away heavy pour, away. right? That's yeah. what we're known for. Hey, come on, everybody loves you, uh-huh. everybody's a good friend. Hey, I have a free one on me, right. everything here. And we realized that just by controlling that, the amount that we poured mm-hmm. and, and the amount that walked out the door or right. disappeared and all this other, that magic uh, missing inventory here, we could walk in with more profit in our pocket. Right. The name of the show is Profit Talk. Yes. It's not about money. I know so many, now our revenue kept growing, but as our revenue grew, we were almost losing more and more money. I know. Right. I mean, I we think, see that. what's the logic of that? I sold more, mm-hmm. but because I was in a losing proposition to begin with, <laughs> every time I sold more, yes. I'm actually losing more. Yes. And that gets into the, the debt question then. Uh, one of the first questions I ask folks that come in to talk to me about access to capital, it's like, why? Like, why debt? Yeah. And I, you know, I come from small business, so I get it. I understand what it's like to have folks depend on you for your paycheck. I'm not just a banker trying to earn his wings back, I suppose, <laughs> you know, giving back to the community. Yes. I really am a small business owner. I get Evil it. bankers. Yeah, right. Evil there. bankers. But right. um, it affects you, your business, your family. Guess what? Your family's involved when your business takes on business debt. Yeah. Okay. So we got to have that discussion. Because your house might be you know, on the line now. Yeah. yeah. PG, a personal guarantee might be signed, most likely. Like, right. most likely it's you. Even with the corporation, I, and it's a misconception people have that, oh, no, no, I formed a corporation. It's separate. It's a separate thing. <laughs> this newborn entity right. is now suddenly credit worthy no. and banks are going to loan it money no. and it doesn't reflect. If it doesn't work, I just shut the corporation down. Sorry, banks, I walk sorry, away. investors. I, I walk, walk away. away uh, and right? I start another one and I tell everybody, here's my projections. Mm-hmm. Here's why this is, you can't lose. You're going to invest with me or you're going to loan me money or whatever here. It nope. doesn't work that way. No, unfortunately, it's it's you folks, you know, to, to ever really get to that point even, you know, most never see that to where the, the entity is, is bankable enough on its own. Uh, maybe a credit line, but for the most part, it's you. Um, That's what we th- we, we had yeah. this bar for 10 years and it was a successful bar. And we kept thinking, well, at some point this bar can sign the next lease. Mm-hmm. We're going to open a second one. We don't have to put up a personal guarantee again. Now I got on two places, the original place and a new place. The entity itself has a cash flow. It is, it's credit worthy. I, we never got to this. No. I think we did get a credit line. but we Maybe got, credit line, yeah, yeah. probably. But, but otherwise it's you. And the first thing they look at is your personal credit report. So that is another you know, talking point. Don't look over point. here, look over yeah. there. That's the business. No, 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 yeah. sorry. No, we're going to pull your personal credit report. For a, a lot of folks, a lot of consultants like bring me in to have that kind of conversation. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm the one who gets to have that discussion about the personal credit, the personal finances, um, and it scares people. I get it. Uh, a lot of folks are embarrassed by it, maybe yeah. you know where they're not where they thought they should be. And it's or, frustrating because that Direct TV bill I didn't pay when I right, got in a pissing match with them, <laughs> and I said, "Screw you! I'm not going to pay that last fifty dollars. You you billed me incorrectly. You mm-hmm. didn't credit me." I'm not paying you, goodbye, good luck, ha. 
all of a sudden that comes up again that discussion yeah, guess from what? three years ago can't loan to you right until we get that derogatory figured out you won't out. give me a hundred thousand dollar business loan because i didn't pay fifty dollars to direct tv could be three yeah. years ago could yeah. be something we have to clean up so there's a place you can go annualcreditreport.com you know whether we can post that somewhere yeah. annualcreditreport.com uh you can still go there so during covid uh, you could actually do it daily because they wanted you to check your credit. See, and make I didn't sure know that. Right. I thought you were going to do it once a year, and then otherwise it starts digging right. your credit report. Or right. Whatever. Uh, nope. So right now, I think it's still weekly until the end of the year. So you have some time. So I re- would really challenge everybody that that's step one. Annualcreditreport.com. Get a copy of your report. Understand what it says. It's not going to give you a score because honestly, we've gotten a little smarter in banking. Um, ah. We're not just credit score driven. I know everybody usually, you know, first thing they're asking, uh, you know, what are the interest rates and then what score? You know, and what I always read about right? these guys. I'm going to, I'm going to crank your score up 50 yeah. points. Yeah. Maybe for five days or something. Right. Here, right. No, no, no. It's more about the history. It's more about where you are personally, how you're utilizing your own personal credit. And then are there some of those derogatories on there that you recognize? Sometimes you don't recognize them yeah. that we got to get cleaned up first. So that could take a month, two months, three months, but maybe. Craig, I need the money so, now. I need the magic bag. I know it. Yeah. Where, where's the cash? So that's why we start today. It's an old saying, right? In, in access to capital space, it's it's you access capital when you don't need it. Isn't that the truth? You're, it is. When you don't need it, I, they give me all the money in the world. When when my credit's good and my mm-hmm. debt is low, everybody's enticing me. Don't you want to borrow? Don't you want to borrow? borrow? Maybe. And, and like to your point, maybe. Maybe you start looking at that plan and saying, okay, I guess the timing is right to implement that growth plan. And what does that look like? So, What about other things other than finance? What about taking on debt? What if you want to take on partners? People want to throw money at me. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to invest in this business here. And I say, sure, I'll take your money. And then all of a sudden, I've got this nightmare. I've got these people that somehow expect something back. How right? dare they? How- <laughs> when I make it, you'll get it. But just sit quietly and, you know, ride right along. Sometimes equity works, right? And we do. Have, we have some equity advisors here at the SBDC. You know, if you're looking equity for your business, different process, different thought process. But to me, it still comes back down to the plan, you know, and, and the financials and, and the projections and what does it look like. And then ultimately, you can make some sort of offer uh, on an equity side you know, versus debt. You have pros and cons to both. Uh, equity, you're going to give something up, or debt. Sometimes, though, it's just you still, right? Sometimes you bring on equity partners because you need some other leadership there uh, where yeah. some strengths that they have that you don't. So uh, I'm not opposed to equity uh, or debt. And we actually look at both maybe for your company to see ultimately what's the best route, um, but especially debt. I, I really want folks to make sure that they understand what debt means to the business and their family before they take on more debt. You see, you know, many times there's some fundamental issues with the business that we need to clean up first. Uh, a like little what? more. Like, give me an example. What would um, you seen examples well, of that? We're all nodding and we're going, but what, I what does know that it. really mean? Well, yeah. um, you just took out the fast cash option from QuickBooks uh, that you have that on the books. You just got another fast cash option from your PayPal account, too, right? And so until we understand why you're continually taking out these fast cash options to run your business, right. you're just gonna bury yourself in more and more debt. You get in this cycle, and, and we see that here. We see this cycle of debt that happens, um, and unfortunately, it usually means they're getting more and more expensive debt to try and help offset the previous debt because they start getting behind. So for example, yep. I read about I, I haven't experienced this, thank goodness, but I read about people that are always having to come up with a short-term loan mm-hmm. to pay the employees. Worst time to do it. Short-term loans have a time and place. Used to have a dance studio with my wife, and that's a whole other challenge we could talk. talk yeah, here. we could talk long, long about for folks who were in business with their spouse. <laughs> uh, Good thing for me, I don't dance, I guess. So <laughs> our, our roles were very clear about what we we're responsible for. My wife is the professional dance instructor. I am not. So um, that's a piece of advice for those that are in business with your spouse. Yes. Make okay. sure you have clear and defined uh, roles. Yeah. But um, I used to take out PayPal loans and buy inventory with it. So it was a, 
a time and a place for it. Because I can sell it and pay it right back. You but got I just, it. I'm, I'm, I'm a little short right now, and if only I had some more stuff, boy, we could sell it. Sell it. So it was all about turn rate. And so my background in specialty sporting goods, right? We had thousands of SKUs. And so inventory management is kind of my, my secret in the background of what I know. Right. It's inventory and turns. So I knew I could borrow that money, and it wasn't the interest rate. And I think this is a, it's a big misconception in the business lending world. It's not about interest rate, folks. It's about how quickly I have to pay it back. Mm. So even a 0% interest rate loan, if I have to pay it back in three months, like I could just get buried in the cash flow piece of it, yeah. right? And I can't pay it. Yeah. So now what? Now I owe this person money. They're coming to visit me, right? So it's a guy named Guido. Yeah, with a baseball they, bat, and they right. come, right? <laughs> so less about interest rate, folks, and more about the term. So that PayPal loan, it's maybe six months. So I have to turn that money fast enough so I can pay it back. Where if I'm using that money to keep the lights on for my utilities yeah. or, or paying other you know non-revenue driving forces here in my business, that's when folks get into trouble. And so they're coming to me looking for longer term debt, which they should. But unfortunately, we have too much to unravel. They've already maxed out credit cards. They're behind on some other payments. And now they want long-term debt. Right, that needed to happen a year ago. Right, so that's why it's so and, important. And there must to be plan. a play because they always tell me that many, I guess, even very successful businesses, they're always using debt. They they mm. figured it out. I'm going to yes. borrow this to cover these. Uh, I guess there's what there's cycles. Cycles. So, so I know of that course. this cycle is going to be a little slower, but that cycle is going to be faster. Mm -hmm. And so I got to borrow a little now to carry me through the rough summer months or the winter months or something else here. And then it almost the, sounds like you're planning. <laughs> oh, <don't. laughs> almost. Uh, almost. almost a plan You're in place scaring there. Scaring me here. Uh, yeah. Understanding your cycles <laughs> and knowing when it happens. Yes, that's it. And that's it. That's a, a great way to use debt. Uh, a line of credit, like you mentioned before, you know, I advocate for all small businesses to go out and, and get a small business line of credit. Talk to your primary business bank and understand what their requirements are, what you need to meet in order to get that line of credit in place, because there are times like that. And that's what COVID killed everybody because people like that yeah. that were living off of debt financing. Uh, and suddenly, two weeks of cash, right? I mean, yeah. that was the other problem. Small business owners just don't have enough cash. Exactly. So exactly. they get themselves in some trouble. Because when I make it, I spend it. And when I uh, <laughs> don't make it, I go borrow. Uh, no, I, I write myself an owner-drawn distribution check. <laughs> that's what happens, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, right. goodness. I think, again, it's the, it, you would think it would be the first thing in every small business's mind, uh, business person's mind, but I, my experience is very few people understand this or use it properly. They think they do. Mm -hmm. They do enough just to get by. And maybe they get a business that goes on and on and on for years. I had a business, well, for 10 years, I had this uh, bar. And I was in a, a, a peer group for a while, and we'd all, I, I dropped out because I felt so stupid because everybody's saying, well, you know, do you analyze your profit right. and loss statement every <laughs> every month, every week? And I said, I only look at it once a year. Right. They were horrified. I said, I don't know what to do. I've had this business for 10 years. We don't, money comes in right. and, and money goes out. And at the end of the month, we say, we got any money left? Yeah, what's left? Yeah. Well, we need to fix that. You know, if it means, you know, I, I work one on one with everybody, then that's what it's going to take. You know, we'll we'll keep trying to help folks better understand their business by the numbers so that they understand what they're looking at with their accountant. Because um, numbers can tell a story. Oh, goodness, yes. My late great father was an executive of Chrysler Corporation. He helped set up, he was a regional manager. He helped set up dealers. He was apparently very good at it. And he could go into a dealership and tell he pretty much, what they're doing and where the problems were, the front end, the back end or whatever. And he would always talk yep. about reading financials and reading between the lines. What is it telling? I said, I don't know, it's right. just telling you numbers. Maybe it went up this month, maybe it went down last month. What does it mean? I don't know. It didn't, oh, no. I yeah. don't know what the story, I don't speak numbers. I don't know what it was trying to tell me. Here. It is, and it does. It has that feeling. You know, whenever I get a hold of somebody's financials, it's, it's like they're speaking to me, you know, they, uh, it tells so much, and um, I'll give the client the courtesy, right, to tell me their story. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, I, I want to look at the financials because it's going to tell me, honestly, everything I need to know about the business, how it's been running, what they're paying attention to, uh, and that's what drives the conversation. Then, and they're just 
one, they're so excited to have that conversation. You know, they're uh, appreciative because somebody's yeah. taken some time to, to help them better understand. For free. For yeah. free. Yeah, yeah. With what we do, no cost to them. But that's where it's got to start. So can financial. any small business just call you guys up and say, hey, I want to have a little conversation here. I want to have somebody look at this and because I'm thinking of doing this and I want a little... I want another opinion. I want another set of love eyes to. on this. Yeah, yeah, I love to. Now, I, you know, I'm not going to do your books for you, right? That's not what we're here <laughs> no. to do. You know, we're here to truly uh, walk with you um, to better understand you know, your business in so many different ways. And we have, gosh, over 100 consultants here in our network: uh, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino counties, and um, consultants with all different specialties. So we can bring in and well, come into others. any of the offices. There's what, five or six offices? I forget how many in the yeah, in this then. region right. here. Go look it up, um, O-C-I-E-S-B-D-C for small Orange County Inland Empire uh, region for the Small Business Development Corporation. And just ask anybody, I wanna talk to Craig. <laughs> Craig's the mysterious guy that uh, we all know how to get a hold of some. I think we send a bat signal up in there, don't just we? Just about, sometimes it feels that way, yeah. <laughs> Phone rings late at night. <laughs> Craig. We got somebody to look at here, yeah. We need some help. Well, thank goodness we have a finance whisperer. Mm -hmm. We have somebody who can speak the secret language here, who can talk to the numbers and, and make sense of them here. Because I don't think most of us ever even look at our numbers or make any sense of them. And as long as we make money, we're happy campers. Right. Here. And when we don't, we're worried and we're going to go borrow, we're going to get investors, we're going to go get debt. Talk and, to us first yeah, before you do that as exactly. well, right? All right, thank you so much, Craig Russum, here my, my at pleasure. the Small Business Development Center here. Uh, a co fascinating conversation. I hope you come back and give us some other examples of, of to. people that you work with over time. Because I think that I'll bet you've had some amazing stories. Good it's and great bad. stories, yes, <laughs> all of it. And, and you learn something from all of them, you know, the good and the bad. I think it's important to understand that. All right, thanks so much. Take care. As we conclude another episode of the Profit Talks podcast, we hope we've empowered your entrepreneurial spirit. Reach out to us to connect with our experts, and let's take your business to the next level. Keep those dreams alive, keep pushing forward, and stay tuned for more. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast and you want your business to reach new heights, just contact us at ProfitTalksPodcast.org or call us at 1-800-616-7232. That's 1-800-616-7232. So until next time, keep thriving.